So I wrote this book together with Jaakko Seikkula. Uh, Jaakko has developed methods around uh, psychiatry. He's a psychologist and he has written a lot about work with psychosis and open dialogues, which means that, that uh, you gather people, uh, the family, uh, all those people who are important to the patient and have dialogues about the situation, which has turned out to be very helpful. What I have done is uh, similar things in social work or what we called mm, multi-helper models. So that if you have multiple helpers around the family who are specialized, they're, it's sector-based, there's one in the hospital, so there's one in the school and so on. And when these people meet, uh, you need uh, facilitation so that the dialogues go well and you can find a common way forward. So we had written about this, about network dialogues. And now we wrote a book about dialogues not only in psychiatry or social work, but we tried to write a book that would be important also for school teachers, also in other professions, even in everyday life. And in order to get a broader scope, in order to to uh, uh, touch people uh, in various professions, we had to go deeper into dialogues. So in order to get a broader scope, you have to go deeper uh, into the core of dialogical relationships. And we have been analyzing what happens in relationships that makes them dialogical. And what we found most important is unconditional respect for the otherness of other people, so that all people are different. And because of this difference, dialogues are necessary and possible. We are not the same. If we were the same, we could understand each other without dialogues, but we are not. And as the philosopher Emmanuel Levinas says, the other is always more than we can ever know. So that we have to be interested in the other person. How does the other person see things from their unique position in the world? And this is what makes dialogues possible. Okay, dialogues are easy. Dialogues are what people are born into. Uh, babies can initiate responses from their mothers. They, not, they don't have to be trained. We don't need to be trained to be responsive and to initiate, invite responses. We can do it from the day we are born. But when we get worried and we tend to lose control of the situation, there's, the temp there's a temptation to take a shortcut and we try to control how other people see things and act. And we try to make them like we are. But that's impossible, impossible because we are all unique. So we have to respect the otherness, the uniqueness of other people. And, and uh, this is the core in our view of, of uh, dialogical relationships. And we are trying to also write about how, how could you uh, enforce, how could you generate dialogical relationships, how, how could you resist the temptation to control how others think and act and instead listen more to uh, their perspective because each person lives in a unique place in their relationships. Even identical twins are in relationship to each other. They're not alike. They're very much the same. They, they have very much uh, identical emotions and stuff like that but they are unique and they are in relationship and, and they also uh, think about their relationship. So if that's true about identical twins, that's certainly true about the rest of us. So how can we keep up the respect for this otherness and go into dialogue with people? This is what we write about and we try to help various professionals to keep up their dialogical relationships.